The last part of phase one of my new T-Track layout is the town of Rural Hall, specifically a transload track with a grade crossing. This section has five signals, a crossover, and a siding. There's some substantial electronics to wire up, and we're gonna do this with an Arduino. This video is brought to you with support from Trains.com. You can use the promo code JimmyDIY to get $10 off your order of $50 or more. You can check them out at the link in the description. Let's go over what we have to do. We have to control four directions for this crossover, and we have this additional siding to control as well. Now the siding is going to be a manual thrown turnout, and I have a whole video on how I did the signal for that, and I'll link that at the end of this video. The crossover signal will be button controlled and needs to be able to isolate each direction so that it can clear only one direction to go. The first thing that we need to do is figure out how many signal combinations we need. Basically, how many variations am I gonna have to create? We have red, 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 green, green, red, 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 green, 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 red, green, red, red, green, red, green, green, red, 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 green, and then red, red, green, red for when that turnout is thrown. Now, I'm not including any of the yellows, and that's going to be something that I do in the future. I'm planning to have the double crossover that I've made earlier and the manually thrown turnout automatically switch the signals. But for right now, I'm going to have the system controlled by two buttons one to throw the crossover, and one to change the signals. Now, this is a pretty complex wiring scheme, and me just showing you how to wire this with my big hands getting in the way, that's not gonna help anyone. So let's go over the wiring schematic. This will be available to follow in the description below on my GitHub page with the Arduino project. We need to wire up four three aspect signals, a motor driver to control the turnout, and two buttons. To do this, we'll connect those four signals to digital pins two through 13 on the Arduino. And in this case, we're using an Arduino Nano with the Nano Shield that you can screw in the wires to. Signal one, we're going to be connecting to pins two, three, and four. Signal two will be pins five, six, and seven. Signal three is going to be pins eight, nine, and 10, and signal four is going to be pins 11, 12, and 13. Now we're going to be connecting the buttons to analog pins A0 and A1, and we're connecting the motor driver to pins A4 and A5. Now these are analog pins, but I'm going to be using them as digital outputs. Now in my setup, I will eventually need connections to other modules, so I'm gonna leave those pins open for A2 and A3, and that's what I'll use. I will be routing all the power for this through the L298N motor driver that I'm using to control the turnout, because that has a five volt output, which can power the Arduino, which means I can essentially have one plug to power up everything, which is ideal. One other thing I forgot to mention is that all the parts are going to be linked in the description below so you don't have to worry about that, including these new terminal strips that you've never seen me use before, these white ones. I really chose these because you can actually cut them to custom size and I wanted two seven position terminals so that I could have two of the signals on one plus the power and two of the signals on another plus the power. So I use these, these are really great, they work fine. Um, I'll link those in the description along with the rest of the parts. We'll then route 5 volts from the Arduino to the buttons and the signals. We then need to split the ground of those buttons between the analog pins and the ground connections, putting a 1K resistor in between. Now, one weird thing about this connection and this setup is that I could not connect them to the, the buttons to the same ground connection for some reason, the exact same one. It's all basically the same, but... For some reason, I had to go and connect it at two different points along where the ground runs. One I had to connect right to go straight into the Arduino, and one I connected in the part that goes to the motor driver and then goes to the Arduino. So it's all technically connected, but for some reason, putting those little 1K resistors in between, it just messed up and they couldn't tell the difference between the two buttons being pushed. So that was just something a little bit weird and quirky about this project. If you run into that, definitely look into that solution. Again, I am placing the diagram with the Arduino sketch on my GitHub page that will be linked below. Now, before I start talking about the Arduino code, know that you can download this entire project at the GitHub link in the description. It even has the libraries, and this Arduino project is using the library that I created for the double crossover. 
The reason I'm doing this is so that I do the long code of turning the lights on and off once and just tell the program to look at the library when it needs to turn on and off a light. Libraries are basically packages of code that can be called upon to increase the Arduino's functionality and you don't have to put the code in there every single time. Now, here's the code. What you basically need to know is that I have an if-then statement for each possible scenario. I've also made several versions of the code that allow for a signal from other crossovers and sidings to come in and change the signal. For now, I have put these two forward slashes on those lines of code, which makes them comments so that the program cannot act on them until I have the signals connected, and then I can just remove those slashes and it'll be part of the program. Now, we can test this on my new layout. First, we'll check red, 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 which is actually the last one you can select on the button. Then we'll do green, green, red, red, which is what it defaults to when you power it on. Then red, red, green, 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 red, green, red, red, green, red, green. Then we have the ones for the, when the turnout is thrown. Red, 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 green. Green, red, red, red. And then the one for when the siding is not aligned to your right of way. Red, red, green, red. Now, as I said before, I'm going to be making some modifications down the road and you will see this project again. For now, you can find this project on my GitHub page and I have listed all of the parts in the description below. Before we go, check out some of these model railroad businesses. Trains in the Valley is a model train shop located in Pennsylvania. They sell new and used model trains with a mission to make trains accessible to everyone. You can check them out at trainsinthevalley.com, link in the description. Model Railway Backshop is a great place if you're looking for a quality paint job for your old or new brass model locomotive. If you're looking to get that brass model weather, you can get that done too. Right now, you can get 10% off any brass model painting and weathering job by using the promo code NMRA10. Check them out at modelrailwaybackshop.com. I've actually done quite a few signaling projects with Arduinos. It's one of my favorite things to do, and you can check those out all right here. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.